You've heard about soft plaque and calcified plaque and hard plaque. So this early stage is soft plaque. And if you notice in that last segment, the discoloration underneath is meant to show inflammation. So there's inflammation in that soft plaque. And it absolutely is possible, a minimal plaque lesion to rupture because soft plaque is absolutely the most dangerous, the most prone to plaque rupture. As healing occurs, so I said inflammation is the first stage towards healing. Part of healing is depositing calcium. And the little white depth flecks in here are calcium. And so you're transitioning, even though the disease is progressing, different segments are transitioning into calcified plaque, which, and they may have had plaque rupture events in the past, but never big enough to cause the heart attack, but certainly big enough to start damaging the downstream tiny blood vessels. And so this progression from left to right is from soft, partially calcified or heterogeneous plaque. And then if you make it through to healing without any intervention, it is known that plaques can stabilize at this level, not rupture, become fully calcified. And that's what shows up on most coronary calcium scoring. Arteries that have had this process so long, and yes, the inflammation in that segment has finally led to some healing. But at what risk? Because I promise you those segments were having micro erosions, small clots throughout the life of that plaque. So David, really good point. We've done a couple of videos that deal with this issue. It was a review of a study, the Honda study, where they actually compared people that had calcified plaque versus people that had soft plaque. And a relatively small study, but it was what? A couple of years, 100 in the soft plaque group, 104 in the calcified plaque group, and you had three or four events in the calcified group, all of them happening very early. So that was when the calcification was still getting locked in. None later on. And what was it? 10 times that amount of events and continued to happen over and over again in the soft plaque population. The other thing I wanted to talk about is that by far my most popular video is my description of my own decrease in plaque from a 70, what, 73 year old artery to 57 year old arteries. And people still say that they watch it and they say, hey doc, I wanna reverse my plaque. You did it, so let me do that. It's uncommon to see that, number one. And number two, it's not just me and David and a few other folks talking about that. I've seen it in Harvard Health, section from Harvard Health with meant for the public. And what they talked about is it's uncommon, but it's not impossible, it's not rare. And there are two places where we tend to see it. People that have not been taking statins before, they start taking statins. So that brings up an issue about statins and inflammation, which we've covered a couple of times over the past few weeks. But most commonly you see it where people have lost a significant amount of weight. They first started seeing that in prisoners of war who had been put on starvation diets, lost 20 or 30 pounds. They also saw that they had major decreases in plaque. So I'm seeing that routinely. Over half of my new patients from the channel will come in, have very solid plaque. And then we start talking and it's like, yeah, I went through an episode where I had too much weight. I've lost 30 pounds. 50 pounds, 150 pounds. The last comment I wanted to make is the mechanism. So if you consider this red stuff as a liquid, including those immune cells that David's been talking about, and you see in the pictures on our course on this, if you'll go back, David, if you consider this red stuff as the inflammation part and the yellowish stuff is a little bit more like the LDL itself, the small dense LDL, you can see if you start removing this red stuff, you're going to get a significant decrease in this space between the media layer and the intima layer. So a CIMT will pick that up as a quote, decrease in our arterial age or quote, reversal of plaque. So one thing that people need to remember and think about is quite often reversal of plaque is not quite so much just removal of LDL as it is just decreasing all of that fluid that's packed between those segments of LDL. And all of that are evidence of stabilization of plaque. Correct. When we decrease inflammation, we actually stabilize the plaque, allow healing to finish and decrease events. So one question that I'd like to address is in terms of symptoms 
symptoms of soft plaque? Well, guess what? They're the same as hard plaque, usually none. There are usually no symptoms until plaque rupture occurs. And so in soft plaque, you're going to pass stress tests most of the time, 99% of the time. Carotid ultrasounds that are not looking at the arterial wall will tell you that you're okay. So soft plaque is silent and deadly. A hard plaque that more often will have symptoms, but it's just as deadly. So if you acknowledge the point, as almost all doctors do now, that heart attacks are caused by disruption of a plaque, then go back and think about the symptoms. What are the symptoms that tell people they're getting ready to have a heart attack? There are none. This slide is really just a recapitulation that you have to have both plaque and inflammation to have this very ugly event called plaque rupture. And, and you can see clot in the wall of the artery. You can see clot in the channel of the artery. And this person actually died from their heart attack. And at the time of autopsy, that entire channel was full of that clot. And you can easily see how that clot is friable and easily breaks. Notice in the upper left-hand part of this picture in that arterial wall is another rust-colored thing. Well, guess what? That was plaque rupture years ago that probably was silent, and yet the injury to this person's arterial system continued, so they started building new plaque on top of that. And you'll see these concentric layers of deposition and plaque growth, and plaque is very dynamic. It's always doing something. It's either getting more dangerous or less dangerous. And unless you're doing something about it, it's getting more dangerous. This is a critical piece of information. And I'm sure if you've watched this channel, you've seen something similar. And this is why we do CIMTs. And just briefly, they looked at 10,000 people that had no symptoms, had normal blood pressure, normal blood sugar, normal cholesterol. And they took a CIMT of their carotid artery and their femoral artery. And they took a one-time picture and then followed these people for a decade. This study started in the late 80s, finished up in the late 90s, long before we had many of the therapies that are in vogue now. And so there was no there was no treatment possible in these folks. So it was an observational study. And they found out that if you had blockage, meaning at least a 70% narrowing in one of those two arteries, and you just watched it, over the next decade, 80% of those people were hospitalized or died because of arterial disease. If you had any plaque in any artery, and didn't do anything about it over a decade, 40% of those people were hospitalized or died from an arterial event. And then lastly, and very importantly, if it was just thickening, if it was in the early stages of aging and you didn't do anything about it, but doc, I don't have any plaque. What do you mean I need to be on a prevention program? You just said my artery was getting thicker. No, it's the early stages of disease. If we don't do something, one out of 11 of those people are gonna be hospitalized or dead over the next decade. My colleagues focused on the far right-hand picture, the 80%. I mean, those people were at high risk. So justifiably, they said, let's figure out how to open up or fix or bypass, somehow prevent that death from happening. But what got ignored is the other two channels of this where plaques present or in the earliest stages and it was ignored. Well, we're not ignoring it anymore. Don't you ignore it anymore. Don't let your doctor say you only have a little bit of plaque. If you've had a bypass surgery, don't let them tell you we fixed the problem. Plaque is deadly. It's the cause of this pandemic and it's preventable. It's curable. We can fix this. So why is this not easily done? in a seven or eight minute visit. Well, on the left of the screen here are all the sorts of things that impact the arterial health the lining of the artery. These are the sources of injury. And on the right are all the sorts of things that Ford and Craig and I look for in terms of what's going on. What's the damage doing to my patient? And here's how they're related. It is a spider web of interrelational things. Think back to one of the first slides I showed you that said that our nutrition, our diet is the number one cause of death. That's why I put nutrition at the top of this and movement second. But if I only address your nutrition, if I only remove those threads from this web, I haven't fixed the problem. There has to be a solution for each of these areas. So some of the folks have said, I don't want to be on a statin. What can I do? Well, you need to do all of these things, but there are definitely times where a statin drug is an appropriate decision. People that don't have high cholesterol sometimes need a statin drug. And it's not because of their cholesterol, it's because of their inflammation.